G'day everyone. I'll just let you know before we go any further that I've left a link in the description below and that is to my new website and online shop. Check it out later on, no worries. Alright, g'day there. I'm Richard Musgrave Evans and welcome back. Today I'm back into the dam country, Australiana, end of summer, start of autumn, the land is as dry as, and what we've got, we've still got a bit of water in this dam, thankfully, and a beautiful light overcast day. Now, you might think light overcast, what kind of light can you get with that? Well, it's quite interesting. When you've got a light overcast day, what you've got is a general light source from the whole sky rather than just the sun. And that can actually create quite an interesting effect. So today, what I'm gonna do is paint, try and paint light, hopefully get it right, paint light with an overcast day. So basically I'm showing you that there's always light in a plein air painting. Plein air paintings are about light, whether it be an overcast day, sunset a full lit day it's always about light okay now today what I'm going to do is as you can see I've got a nice dam and what I've done is I've already blocked in before I go any further I'll just let you know what I'm using oil paint mainly big chunky palette knives like this but there's also going to be some brushwork painting on board white prime board okay now as you can see here, what I've done is I've already put the block, blocked the darks in, and the reason I've done that is for two reasons. One, it's composed the picture in my mind, and two, it's also just warmed me up, so I'm ready to go, otherwise I'd be hitting the video from Stone Cold, which is probably not the best thing. Okay, so now, right, so this is all gonna be water. This is gonna be the uh, side of the bank there and a little bit of sky. I think that's a nice composition. Like I said, it's just the basics, and you put the darks in first, and then work the lights over the top of it. All right, so now what I'll do is work out what the biggest difference is between what I've got here and what I've got there. All right, let's have a look. Okay, so I reckon maybe get that water in, and then the next trick will be to get that paddock, because the sky, as you can see, is already a very light overcast day, so that, is very similar the white board is very similar so we don't have to start there this is probably the biggest difference right let's do it okay so interesting colored water it's quite a dark color so I've got a bit of a puddle here but I'm mixing cobalt blue burnt sienna more cobalt blue let's have a look what we got cobalt blue burnt sienna maybe a tad of magenta thrown in let's just have a look at that color alright, I might get it in with the uh, knife, that's a better way to get it in. Yeah, because of the colour of the water, it's really influencing the colour of the reflections, like even though you've got green up here in the trees, the water is such a dark tannin colour from the uh, gum tree leaves that it's quite a dark neutral tone here, so I'll put that in. Bit more over here, let's have a look. I really love the palette knife as opposed to the brush. I find the brush is good. But what I usually use the brush for is softening more than anything. I quite often just go for the palette knife while putting the paint on because for me I just find that the easiest and freshest way to go about it. So let's just get all that in there. Take that one off for a minute. I don't know if I even need that one, so hang on. May not need that one there, so I might leave it off for now. Okay. Just making sure that whatever's there is about here, so it's mimicking. 
That seems about right. Okay, now I've done that, right? Now if I get this brush, it'll just soften it. As I said, I put the paint on first with the knife, I find it better. What I'm going to do is go crossways like this to help soften and straight down because water, when you're painting other parts of the landscape, you can it's good to do all different angles, like brush this way, brush diagonally, brush vertically. With water, it's always good to either go straight down or straight across. That seems to be the way that water is, uh, to make water look convincing, straight down gives reflections, and straight across helps to soften, but also gives the breeze across the water. So using those two techniques on the water itself, just colouring in a bit here, get rid of a few of those. Using those two techniques is the way to go for the water itself. Okay. Yep, not bad, not bad. All right, now like I said, I'll put this in. Let's do that. It's quite a keyed down colour because it's overcast. So, instead of using a pure yellow ochre and burnt sienna, which would be way too rich, we've got to key it down. So I'm just putting it into some of those shadow colours that I pre-mixed earlier. That's knocking it back for starters. And being autumn here, and not having much rain, or it's pretty much as dry as, like I said earlier, the ground now is going really dry, like the colour of the grass is just not that really rich colour anymore, it's kind of like a very dead colour, but at the same time, that is a it can be beautiful, so I'm not going to say, oh, it's horrible, it's actually a really nice subtle colour. I'll just put it in. There's a bit of a dark tone I've put in here because what's happening is that, you can probably see up here, it's just a little bit darker because there's so many trees up there. The light, like I said, is coming from every angle, but at the same time, there's a generalized shadow there from the trees and there's a generalized lighter tone here because it's out in the paddock without any trees interfering. soften a bit. Now that little, I might get, yeah, the edge of the bank there in, which is more of a grey earthy colour. Just a bit more blue and maybe a bit more magenta mixed with that will probably make it slightly greyer than that original grass colour that I was just mucking around with. Let's have a look. Definitely greyer. So we've got, just got to work out what we've got here. Okay, yep, we've got it. Put that dirt in. A bit more yellow ochre around this side. There's a bit more of a lighter sandy colour here, so I'll stick that in. It's got a little bit more yellow ochre there. Yep. Looks good. Alright. Okay. Kind of get rid of, getting rid of some of those whites. Maybe a few whites can be left, I don't know. You make it up as you go. Right, so now that's the edge of the water. There's the wet sand right here. Just where it meets is a bit of a lighter tone as we've got. That's quite a lot time there, so all right, I might stand back and have a look. Still going good, but I haven't quite finished the paddock, so I better put that up there. I'll get out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. All right. Maybe just soften it a bit. Soften it. Work with random short marks. Like I said down here, it's good to do boom, long and long. Here, once you're in the paddocks, it's actually better to break it up with shorter marks because 
you're imitating the different grass and just the feeling of light in general, which is kind of short and jabby. Soften that a bit. Right. Let me take that edge up a bit. Let's have a look. What's going on here is the painting's going this way. Sometimes as the painting flows that way, then what you want to do is put a stopper and how you do that is just lift the edge of the uh, paddock up a bit. I mean, it is there. The edge of that paddock is lifted up like that, but even if it wasn't, if that paddock was rolling down like this, I'm still inclined at the end to just lift it a bit to stop your eyes going out of the picture. Stand back and have a look. Yeah, all right, what are we doing now? Now, that sky, like I said, is very white. Hang on. I might just get a bit of yellow ochre and green. Just add a little bit more here on top of what I've got there. Just a few lighter tones on those trees. Right. Now that water there is a keyed down version of the sky. It's quite a light tone, but it's still not as light as the sky. We'll go cobalt blue, magenta, any colour, just to knock it back into a grey. So some of those yellow ochres or whatever. It's kind of a keyed down version of the sky. slide that through, hang on, just got to work out in my head exactly where I want that waterline to be. It's kind of a cool tone here, I'm using, it's predominantly more blue and blue and magenta there, which is contrasting all those warm tones, which is good. Just trying to work out what I want that, I think I'll go a bit higher where this white is. That can be where the edge of the waterline is. make it up as you go. Right. Now, I can start getting back into this. Putting some of the tones of the water in. It's a beautiful kind of colour that water today. Very nice colour. Now let's just go a little bit darker as we get closer because as you get closer you're looking more into the water and you're getting less of the reflection of the sky. The, the further away you're looking out there you're seeing pretty much sky colour. The more it comes into here, whoops, into here you're actually getting more, you're looking into the water so it's a deeper tone. So in saying that I'll knock up a darker brew. A darker brew of tea. <laughs> that might be too dark. Get some of that lighter stuff. Slightly more white. Stick it in. Just go a bit lighter. I can see it should be a bit lighter. There's paint starting to fly everywhere now. We're starting to get into it now. That's a good sign when you see the paint flying around everywhere, you know it's starting to warm up. A bit more blue and white. Just going by what I'm feeling. I might take this little one off too so I can colour in here. Now what I'm doing now is just kind of blending them together with little short marks. Yeah, hang on. Throw a few in here I can see. Now I've kind of got them blended, I might go for a bigger brush. Like I said, I mostly use brushes for blending, not actually painting itself. Right, so I'll do some downward marks to get that flowing. Crosswood marks. Right down. Well actually to tell you the truth, you could go like that, but then finish with straight down or straight across. Go that way. 
beautifully straight down like that. I'll just have a look. Now that's all right, but I can see it's a little bit too dark, but that's all right because it's best to paint um, light on top of dark. So as before when I was blocking in, I had all the dark tones and I've slowly gone lighter and lighter. Here, I've gone dark and maybe I'm feeling like that's a little bit too dark, but that won't matter because now I'll put the light on. But before I do that, I think I'll start working on that sky. Right, that's, that's why you've got to stand back and analyse the colours. Right, that sky today is a beautiful colour. Overcast days can be beautiful. I might just move these brushes out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. So you can see the, the mixture better. So I might mix like a brew of white and yellow ochre. And then I might also mix another brew of cobalt blue without much in it, just a little bit of cobalt blue and magenta. So it becomes like a light purple color. And that light purple and that yellow ochre like are on the opposite of the color wheel. So you've got, imagine the color wheel, you've got yellow here those purples will be on the other side, so once you put them next to each other, whoo, it goes off. That's those uh, warm against cool complementary colours sort of thing. Okay. So I'll just uh, throw a bit in. I might get rid of that, we don't need that as part of the picture. Here we go, that goes in. I'm not going to quite touch those trees yet because if I do it'll start smudging and going everywhere so I'll just kind of suggest it in for now lightly pull some through here hang on a bit more just suggest it all in there for now without getting too carried away and then later on I'll start smudging them together a bit and get that piece of paper again. Now I've done the uh, purples, I might do a bit of this warmer yellow ochre now. And that will really contrast. So even though it's a grey sky, it has all the beauty of warm and cool contrast. And you can't get much better than that. in here and there just feel the subject always feel the subject uh, I'll stand back just have a little look and compose the picture that's all good but I want to reintroduce some of these distant foliage so I'll mix up a bit of blue and magenta there because it's keyed back because it's further away a few of these greens and yellow ochres let's have a look Pretty close to what I want. I might just go a bit more yellow ochre than that. Just lightly pulling on and purposely starting to smudge the paint now, like pulling the two paints together to give a softer edge. Hang on, I'll just put this in the bin. Start pulling some of that paint with the palette knife down to the trees. Purposely starting to smudge them together. By just pulling through, you can see half smudge like that. Like just go, what have we got? Might load it a bit more. Some warm and cool contrast. And when you pull through with a, with a clean brush, or clean palette knife I should say, you're kind of smudging everything together and getting a slightly out of focus just a slightly out of focus look which imitates that kind of silhouette effect when the light is behind the trees or all around looking into that light you got the silhouette the light's trying to eat around the tree so you get that slightly softer effect just drop this one in the bin
trying to introduce a new angle to the uh, horizon there, going down a bit. It's all good, all good. I'm at this brush. Just going to soften stuff a little bit. All different angles, whatever. Maybe even use the palette. You can use the palette knife for that instead. Hang on. I might go a little bit lighter here. So I've got yellow ochre, white burnt sienna. Use some of that white, I guess. Yeah, it's so. Just here I can go a little bit lighter. This is kind of the edge of that bank. Now I'm going to put a few of those greens. There's a couple of green, even though it's been an absolute drought, there's a couple of green tussocks just kicking around. A bit more of the green. Viridian green, burnt sienna, yellow ochre. But the sun's finally out, look at that. Stick a bit of that greenery around. And stand back and have a look. Not too bad. What I might do... Right. Bit of white. Bit of magenta and blue. Of that light tone. We're trying to mix up just a slightly darker version of the sky in the water. Like I said, it was a little bit too light here. Maybe I need just a bit more here and there. So that's a very cool colour on the edge of the bank, which is kind of That's kind of a complementary colour to this, so you get more of a jump of light, warm and cool. That's alright. I'm always working around, never finishing one thing at a time. Just going to lighten the paddock out here a bit. light tones, a few greys, whatever thrown in. Okay, I'll have a look. Getting there, getting there. There's a bit of light rain too. That's the beauty of this shelter. There's a tiny bit of light rain. But, I know nothing about it under here. A bit of burnt sienna, yellow ochre. Making a key down version here, a warm tone with that cool tone here for the water. So you've got warm and cool. Just introducing a little bit into here. What do we got? Just right, so now I've got a bit in. I'll just put a few things down. What do we got? Put that one down. Just make that water soft as. I'm almost feeling like it's a little bit too faded here. I'll have a look. Before I go any further, I'm just going to change the shape of the paddock up here. The yellow ochres and all the earthy tones. I just want to give the feeling of this hill running that way, which it is. Right, I'll stand back and have a look. Is just those beautiful trunks. For a start, you've got the trunks of the trees, but then you've also got all the dead trees lying on the ground, which are quite a good subject, and they're quite a purpley kind of blue grey which really contrasts that ochre colour so I've already got a blue mixture from the uh, cobalt blue and magenta and white here which doesn't look too bad let's just have a look at the 
edge of the palette knife, I'll just draw a bit in. Put some of those trunks in. Just also using that same colour to mix up some of that grey sand that's right on the edge here. The sand's fairly greyed out. Just put that there. Go for it. Oh, the sun's coming out. Look at that. Slightly more yellow ochre version. I'm going to pull that through there. Get a the paint across. Okay now I'll start drawing some of those actual trunks of the tree itself. I'll use a bit more burnt sienna, a bit of blue. It's a slightly warmer tone some of those trees. Just got the knife on edge. I might also use a bit of that uh, cooler version over here, which is a purpley sort of colour, right down here. Just with a knife on edge, you draw, get some draftsmanship going here, feel the trunks. More of that with a slightly darker tone here. Right. Breaking the lines up. Got the knife on edge. Drawing a nice little tree here. Stand back and have a look. Alright, so with this brush, just going to introduce a bit more softness in the paddocks and a little bit lighter in tone. So I've got some burnt sienna and yellow ochre. Because even though we're looking into a silhouette, we still don't want the painting to be too dingy. So. Not only that, you can add some good variety in marks. Soften. Yeah. Of course, I love the knife, don't I? Just love using the knife. Pull some through here to lighten it. Right, so we're introducing some more light source, like I said, instead of just all being dark. bit more of those colours through here, not too many, don't want to get too repetitive in your marks. I'll just have a look. That's alright now. I'll purposely make up a really fresh brew of magenta blue and white so it's half mixed. It's almost like a rainbow. It's got beautiful subtle hang on what have we got colours. Alright. Well the sun's out. Just add them in to give a really contrasting magenta, beautiful. Take this one out. I'm just going to take a bit of paint off there. That magenta colour I put in, if you can see the colour of the paddocks, they're all those warm ochres, right? So as soon as you get the magenta for these trunks, they're on the opposite side, of, opposite side of the colour wheel, like I said earlier, so you get that real contrast of warm and cool, even on a grey day like today. So, here we go. Right. 
take a bit of paint off to reveal the undertone here for a few of the darks. Take a bit of paint off here to give the draftsmanship of those, those branches, etc. By pulling the knife up, you can get rid of the paint and come back to the underpaint, like so. You watch, and that way you get to draw the shape of the trunk. just by using the edge of the knife and taking paint away. I'll do it a few times because these trunks are not quite the right shape. That's a bit thick there, so we'll take that off. Just pull it in like so. Same deal there. Maybe make it slightly wider at the base. Let's have a look, what have we got? Slightly wider at the base. The trees are seem to be thicker always at the bottom. Sticking a few more of those. Getting a really good contrast here of warm and cool. Those magentas against against all those ochres. straight down, just reinforcing that softness in that area. Right. It's a very uh, subtle thing we're doing here. Like, like I said, we're working with subtle light rather than big and contrasting light. So, to get the painting to really pop, you've got to, you've got to get your subtleties right. When the sun's just come out, just have a look, see if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I think it could be a good thing, and what I might do is actually introduce a little bit more spark and light into this painting with sunlight. I think it's a good thing, because it's showing me that I can put some highlights on the water. So, a bit of pure white with the tiniest bit of yellow over there, not too much, so it's very light tone. Okay, well, there you go. The sun came out, but the battery went dead on the camera. What a combo. All right, well, I finished the painting off, and you can see what I've done, so I'll explain what I've done. As I said, the uh, sun was coming out, which is great, so I used some of those highlights just to pump it up, particularly in the water here. Really put a highlight on the water and accentuated those reflections. Now, you can see all those downward marks really do give the illusion of reflections, and, and those cross marks really do give the illusion of a little bit of a breeze across the water. All right, now as up, coming back up into the subject, you'll see that those light overcast ochres and then magentas and lilacs have a real complementary effect in the eyes. And that goes all the way through to the sky. The sky's got the same high key ochres and lilacs. So it's repeating itself, but in a higher key. The end result is you've got a day that hasn't got full sunlight and yet it really does feel like there's a lot of light around. Well, that's pretty much about it, but there is one more thing I'd just like to tell you, a bit of exciting news. My webpage and my shop at Shopify are now finally up and running and ready to go. And to celebrate this, I'm going to have a 25% off store-wide sale for one week only. Now remember, it's free shipping, so whatever you pay at the basket at the end is what you're paying. And if you want to interact with me, feel free to do so. We can discuss the paintings or discuss anything to do with the sale, the shipping, whatever. It's all good. All right, well, pretty exciting stuff, and uh, can't wait to hear from you. All right, until next time, I'll see you later.